Welcome back, everybody. Well, after the death of George Floyd and the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement, many companies and corporations, they made promises that they were going to make Black Lives Matter in the workplace. It's been one year. How have things changed? Have they changed? To speak to us about it, we welcome back inclusion strategist Carlin Purcell. Marcika, good to see you. Carlin, how are you? Thank you, Dina. Good to see you. We just heard you. Donovan Bennett uh, earlier this morning saying he is surprised and optimistic about the fact that this is a conversation that continued for 12 months. It's not just because we're here one year later. It has been an ongoing conversation. He believes this means change is finally happening, fundamental change. Do you agree? Yes, Dina, I am, you know, optimistically, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that this means that we will start seeing the structural changes that we need to actually make Black Lives Matter. And um, it, it's really at a point in time where we're hoping that organizations keep Black lives at the, the, the top of the agenda when it comes to making institutional and structural changes in the workplace. And I know you're leading the charge with uh, KDPM Consulting Group. Tell us about what it does and what served as the catalyst for you to start it. Yeah, we are, tr you know, we, we are making our contribution, you know, in a small way as we can. For me, Dina, it's very personal. I worked 20 years in the financial industry, nine years in the Caribbean, 18 years here in Canada, yeah. and, and I couldn't go to, to HR. HR was not a safe place for me. I did not have the privilege of actually taking my racial um, discrimination and, and macroaggressions um, um, in the workplace. So I had to carry that with me. So inclusion safety is something a lot of Black professionals don't necessarily have the luxury to to experience so for me at kdpm you know consultant group what we are working on is to really create psychological safety a lot of organizations are talking about inclusion safety but before we get there what about the mental and emotional and the economic success of black employees in the workplace and this is a huge focus for us because we want to lead not just you know looking at history and our trauma dinner it's important for organizations to also think about the future of the workplace and how they can prioritize prioritize black lives in the workplace and also in our community and society at large. And you have an important roundtable happening this Thursday at 6 p.m. You said you want yes. everybody and anybody who could be there to take part because it's all about having these conversations. Some people might not even be aware of the microaggressions or conscious of their own or even know what it is. And that's OK. That's why we have these conversations is to learn and grow learn and grow and to take action on this Thursday. We're bringing together Tanya Sinclair, who's the founder of the Black HR Professionals of Canada, Jean-Marc Mocha, who is, you know, um, an identity and stigma lab at Schillick School of Business, doing research around how do we prioritize psychological safety for Black folks, and Carol Sandy, who's a career coach and couple and family therapist. And we're coming together to take a look at, you know, what are some of the cultural and leadership structures needed so that Black individuals and Black employees can feel safe at work no matter how we show up and how we self-identify. Carlin, you're beautiful inside and out. You inspire so many of us, and we have to keep talking about this. You're an incredible leader. Where do we find more information? You can find more information on kdpmconsultinggroup.com and also follow me on all social outlets. And we're looking forward to seeing decision makers, CEOs, HR leaders, inclusion strategists in the workplace to show up on Thursday for this event and to look out for more on our research in terms of what's needed to truly make Black Lives Matter at work. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for making time for us Good today. Night. Good to see you, Carlin. All right, coming up, a new list reveals which cities have had the world's longest lockdowns. Two places in Canada landed at the very top. We'll tell you which ones right after this. You can probably guess.